my channel. Today I'm filming another video after work, which like I said, I don't often do, but I'm trying to take advantage. My husband's out of town, so I have the house to myself and I'm like, why not film this? And I feel like if I wait any longer, we're gonna be in March before this video goes up. So that is why I'm filming this today. Now, I do have to say, if you are new to my channel, welcome, my name is Karen Harris and I buy way too much makeup. So in 2020, I'm on like a little bit of a low buy, no buy journey. Um, but I did wanna make this video this year just because there are some brands I wanna try or attempt to try this year. And I thought if I made this video, even if I didn't try the brands, maybe some of you would end up trying them or you know, maybe start following them on Instagram or check out their website or something, you know? I don't think you have to buy something from a brand to support them. So just thought I would make this. I am not gonna put any pressure on myself to absolutely try all of these brands. And I think that's okay. We can still make it work. If I try things that aren't on this list, great. Who knows what new brand might come out? Like in 2019, I made a video of brands I tried. Like I didn't plan to try, but I tried. And I found so many cool brands in 2019. So I'm really excited for that possibility in 2020 as well. Plus I just used the Amrezy palette on my eyes this morning. And I was like, okay, I have to film with this look on so I can document this look. And I just got these really cool earrings from Bobble Bar in the mail. And I've wanted these forever. They were $70 and I finally picked them up on sale for $24. I was very proud of myself. So yeah, I had to mention that and I had to film with this look on. So anyway, if you haven't guessed already from that long winded intro, I am filming brands I wanna try in 2020 and I have 20 brands? I don't know, I actually have 21. I don't know if 20 counts as a brand or not. So we'll see what you guys think. And I will try and remember to link the brands in my description box, just so you guys can like go check them out or something. And I will try and put pictures of what I am referring to as I'm talking to you about these brands, just so you guys know what I'm talking about as well. So without further blabbering, let's get into it. So the first brand is Makeup Eraser, and if you guys follow me on Instagram, you already know I've checked Makeup Eraser off the list because I did purchase the Makeup Eraser. I kind of added Makeup Eraser to the list after I bought the Makeup Eraser, and I was like, hey, that's a brand. So I wanted to add it on my list. I ran out of makeup wipes, and I thought I had backup makeup wipes, and I didn't. And I was like, now is the time to see if you can find an alternate to makeup wipes. And you guys have been so helpful on Instagram. You've been giving me tips on how to clean them. Some of you told me to try dupes and it's just been great. There is like a whole makeup eraser community out there. So, so far I've only used it once as I'm filming this video. I thought it was very effective. My friend Amy told me she only uses it on her face makeup. She doesn't use it on her eye makeup. So luckily I have a Sephora eye makeup remover that I love that I bought as a backup. And since I started using makeup wipes, I didn't need to use the eyeshadow or eye makeup remover. So it just sat dormant for years. And now I finally have an excuse to use that up too. So very excited about that product. And I kind of want to purchase one more just to so have like two to rotate back and forth. But for now, I'm just going to be happy with the one I have, test it out more and see where it takes me. And the next brand I want to try is called Shared Planet. And this one I discovered because I watched a video by Julia Mazzucato and she was actually talking about brands that do like sponsored posts but then the YouTuber doesn't disclose it. So it wasn't a very favorable video for the brand but it still sparked my interest because I think a portion of their profits go to like animal rescues and things like that. I haven't done too much research on it all I know is they have a polar bear palette and my husband is obsessed with bears. And so that just like called to me on like a spiritual level. But also the shades aren't really like the most attractive shades. Like my heart isn't like completely drawn in yet. So it's kind of on my list of brands to like watch out for. And if they do something really cool in 2020, I'll maybe check it out. If not, I'll just keep them on my radar. And like I said, 
follow them on Instagram and share their posts whenever they do something cool. The next brand I want to try is Kaleidos Cosmetics. Now, there's Kaleidos Makeup and Kaleidos Cosmetics. It's all very confusing, but Kaleidos Cosmetics, I believe, is a little bit smaller than Kaleidos Makeup. I'm not quite sure. So, anyway, I saw these beautiful singles that they came out with, and a few people I know got them in PR, and they've been doing beautiful swatches of them. So really kind of like piqued my interest. And so now I'm very excited to see if I can end up trying them in 2020. Again, I don't know too much about the brand, but definitely have my eye on them. The next brand is also a smaller indie brand called Copacito Cosmetics. And they ended up on my radar because Angie talked about them as well as Amy in their Will I Buy It videos and mentioned that they were doing a collab with a influencer called Basket Case or something like that. I can't remember her name, but I will throw up a picture of her palette that she created. It's stunning. And so I have just had my eye on it. They recently restocked it, but I already purchased four palettes for January and I can't buy anymore. So I'm just gonna have to admire it from afar. And I'm really waiting on thoughts from Amy and Millie from Bat to Brow because I know they both purchased the palette, so interested to see what they think. Another brand that I'm pretty sure Amy talks about is M Cosmetics. Now, not M, E M Cosmetics, which is Michelle Phan's brand. I tried that brand last year, was not a huge fan, but M Cosmetics is a Canadian indie company, kind of like Cleonade. They make beautiful shimmer shadows. They have some really gorgeous single shades that I've had my eye on. There's this one single that I have saved in my Instagram because it's stunning and I'm just waiting for it to restock. The only thing is with my no buy, low buy, one of my rules was to not buy single shadows because I have a lot of singles and also there is a singles declutter and organization video in my future. I haven't filmed it yet, but I definitely want to. And so I'm kind of just trying not to load up on singles even though I just bought the Vibrant Multichrome set from Cleonade. You guys, those shadows were too pretty. Like, my clown ass had to have those shadows. So I did buy those, but planning on waiting on the M Cosmetics ones, but they look beautiful and they've been restocking them. And hopefully while I'm talking, I'm flashing pictures of all their beautiful singles that have been capturing my attention. And the next brand, this one, I don't know if a lot of you have heard of this brand, but my friend Amanda from Makeup Just For Fun had mentioned this in her year-end favorites. It's the brand called Stony Cosmetics, and it is a black-owned makeup brand, and I was on their website checking them out. They don't have too much stuff yet, but I think Amanda said she discovered them at a makeup convention that she went to, and... She really likes the palette, and of course I trust Amanda. We don't have the exact same makeup taste, but she tests out a lot of makeup, so I'm very, very curious to try out the Stony Cosmetics palette. They have one palette right now. I'll pop up a picture as well for you guys to see that. And I was really inspired by the story of the brand and the owner. She seems very legit. I believe she is a member of the United States military and also has this makeup brand, and total rock star, so I'm very, very excited to pick up the palette when I get the chance to do so. The next brand is Midas Cosmetics, and again, if you guys follow me, you would know I've already picked up two palettes from Midas. They had a really good sale in December, and I knew I wanted to try Midas in 2020, so I picked up two palettes from them. I picked up the Lemonade palette, which my friend Teresa raves about, says it's like one of the best yellow palettes. She said it was better than the ColourPop one. I didn't really like the ColourPop one. I'm always on the hunt. I'm always on the journey to find the perfect yellow for my skin tone. So we'll see how that one does. And then I also bought a little quad from them, which I did try out. Um, I wore it to work and I thought the look turned out really great. Uh, I got a lot of DMs that day. So that was really satisfying. And you guys will see that in a upcoming video. Um, I want to do like maybe a look or something and do like a quick little review on that. And they are collabing with Hannah from Smoky Glow this year. So she actually just did her reveal video today as I'm filming this. 
and it's really pretty. I'm just not 100% sure how tan girl friendly the palette is going to be or the highlighter as well. So I'm excited to see swatches on different skin tones. And yeah, if I think the palette's going to work for me, I would definitely like to support Hannah and pick it up. So lots of exciting things there. The next brand, <laughs> this is so funny because I had no intention of buying this palette and I had totally written off the brand because I honestly thought this palette was super boring. But I've seen so many polarizing reviews. Some people love this palette. Some people hate this palette. So I felt like I had to do it. I had to buy it and see for myself what side of the fence I was going to be on. So I did purchase from Tati Beauty. I bought her palette, the Neutrals palette. I have it. I haven't used it yet. I'm so scared. I kind of want to film me using it for the first time in like a first impressions video. So I haven't used it yet, which typically I'll try out a palette as I'm getting ready for work, which is what I did with the ABH palette. So Tati, Tati's palette was one of my purchases of January 2020. Um, it was palette number three. Uh, <laughs> so I'm excited. We'll see how it goes. I'll definitely film a look with it um, and tell you guys what I think of it and see, you know, what she, what else she's going to launch in 2020. Um, I've seen mixed reviews on the Blendiful. I wasn't really interested in that, but the palette did restock when the Blendiful launched. So that's when I picked it up and I'm super curious to see what I think of that palette. The next brand I want to try, this is number nine now, is Scott Barnes. And I didn't even really know who Scott Barnes was until he started doing videos on Tati's channel. And he seems like a very talented makeup artist. I mean, definitely like full face, contour, like it's crazy, right? So he has a makeup line now and I've seen a lot of like YouTubers test out his makeup line, especially like the gals in like the high end product category. And so now I'm really curious. Somebody did message me and say that Scott Barnes makeup was made in China. Now, I have mixed thoughts on this. I know some makeup that's produced in China isn't always the greatest. But, I mean, just because something's made in China, to me, it doesn't automatically send up a red flag. Um, because there's makeup that comes from China that I personally think is great quality. So, I don't know. But the person that was telling me this also just said... She just meant that the price point was kind of outrageous for something that's made in China, which I have to agree with, but also I haven't done any personal research on this. I'm just conveying what somebody told me, so I don't really know, but I think his face palettes look really interesting. His blush palette looks so fun. I think he has a blush highlighter palette, or maybe he has one of each. I can't remember, but his face palettes are actually the things that are attracting me the most, and then the colorful eyeshadow palette looks really fun, but... I have so many colorful eyeshadow palettes, I don't really feel the need to go down that road. Uh, but I also have a lot of face palettes, so I probably don't need anything from that brand right now. But I want to keep an eye on it and see how I feel about it, or if something new comes out, maybe it'll pique my interest, you never know. Number 10 is Likely Makeup. Now again, this is another smaller indie brand, and they did the Clown Blush Palette. Now that blush palette... It was very unique because it has a yellow blush shade and I didn't really look into the brand at the time when they did that first blush palette, but now that they did the second one, I did go back and look at their Instagram and look at people's looks with these like really unique blush shades that they come out with. And they just look so fun. I can't remember if I've seen any tan girls use their product, but if I have, I'll throw pictures up so you guys can see. But it just looks like a very cool product. Again, one of my no-buy rules is no blush, no highlighter, no bronzer, because I have enough of that product, so I don't think I'll be able to actually purchase from them, but I wanted to put them on my list again, just so I had them on my radar, in case they did something really phenomenal and iconic this year. So the next brand I want to try is Shroud Cosmetics. Now, I feel like this one isn't technically a new brand because it's just Strobe Cosmetics re- branded but I figured I'd throw it on here again so I could keep them on my radar. I didn't love Strobe Cosmetics 2 palettes that they came out with but I know there's a lot of people that are huge fans of their palettes 
And their new Arcana palette looked really stunning as well. It's a very grungy tone palette, which is actually really what I'm into right now, especially at, in fall. I was really into those grungy shades. So I definitely had like one eye on them, but the price point was a little high for me. And again, based off of my previous experience with two of their palettes, I decided to just admire it from afar, but it's definitely a brand I'm gonna have my eye on in 2020, just in case they do something really cool this year. Okay, so the next brand, again, I don't know if I'm actually gonna purchase from this brand in 2020, but it is a brand I would like to try at some point. It's just that lipsticks are on my no buy for at least the first two months of 2020. So I am planning on extending my no buy as much as possible. And I really don't think bullet lipsticks are gonna break me this year. And that's the only product that Lisa Eldridge has come out with so far. So I don't know much about her line. I don't know if she's planning on adding things. I've heard nothing but good things about her product. And it always seems to sell out and people seem to go nuts for her stuff. So I'm assuming it's pretty good. So for that reason, she is on my list of brands to keep an eye out and maybe try this year. The next brand is Ronnie Cosmetics. Now you guys know how much I love supporting women-owned makeup brands. And to top it all off, Ronnie Cosmetics is run by Ashani, who is Total Makeup Junkie here on YouTube, and she is another brown girl. And so of course I wanna support her brand, but everything is like almost there and just not exactly what I want. So when she first did her lipsticks, I wasn't really into them. Then she, I think she did liquid lipsticks, wasn't really into them. She did her first palette, wasn't really into it. And then she did her second palette, which was like a beachy themed palette. And I did watch her reveal video where she kind of explained it as like her go-to neutrals with a pop of blue. And even though I really, really wanted to support, the palette was just not my perfect palette. It didn't really make me want to buy it, and it also was at a pretty high price point, which is kind of understandable because small indie brand, you know, but I just couldn't bring myself to do it. So definitely a brand I want to keep an eye on, and I hope I get to try them this year, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. The next brand is another small indie makeup brand that I really, really want to support, but the only palette I want from them, I just feel will not work for me. They had such a good deal on this palette during Black Friday and I wanted it so badly, but I just kept telling myself, you're gonna waste your money. You know pastels never work for you. Um, and I'm talking about Nomad Cosmetics and I've actually talked to the owner on Instagram. She seems like such a nice lady. They're always trying to promote like positivity and it's like a husband and wife company, which I'm also super into because I work with my husband, so I know how much work it is to work with your spouse. And it's just like really cool when people can do that, you know? Yeah, it's really cool to see their story and their journey and all the palettes they come out with. And their palettes are usually themed based on like a city that they've traveled to. So the palette I was describing is the Harajuku palette, the Tokyo inspired palette. It's such a stunning palette. And I watched Butte Bean's video on that palette and she basically sold me that palette. like. It was stunning, but I just don't know if it's my color palette, if it's gonna be flattering on me. So for that reason, I'm just admiring it from afar. And some of their other palettes, I feel like the shades really don't excite me. So I'm just waiting for that perfect palette from them because I would love to support them. I think they have a really great brand. And yeah, I just have such a soft place in my heart for husband and wife teams. So yeah, hopefully I'll get to try them. So another brand, I wanna try in 2020 this one. I have my eye on a collection that they did. It's Kristen um, Lee Cosmetics, I think is how you said. They have this like green eyeshadow collection and my friend Amy again talked about it in a Will I Buy It video she did. And I think she bought this set and I haven't seen a video from her. I need to check up on her if she did that video and I just missed it or what happened. But these green shades look so beautiful and I was so tempted to buy it, but I think the whole set is like 50 something dollars. And like I said, again, I'm not supposed to be buying singles right now. So I'm just gonna admire it from afar. If you guys have tried the brand or any of these brands I'm speaking about today, definitely let me know your thoughts down in the comments because you might really help sway my opinion one way or the other on some of these brands. 
So the next brand I want to try this year is Cosette. And Cosette was on my list last year as well. And I just remember Makeup Struggles mentioning them. And I've always wanted to buy from them. But they are pretty pricey. So I think I got a tip from one of you to sign up for their email list. So that is my plan is to hope fully get a deal around 4th of July or Christmas time in 2020. We'll see how it goes. But their shimmers look so fun and sparkly and delicious. So hopefully I'll get to try them. I tried to look for videos on the brand and it looks like whatever hype they had may have died down because I haven't really seen a lot of videos about them recently on YouTube. So if you have any insider info on the brand Cosette, I would love to hear from you guys. So the next brand is number 18 and this one is Refer. So Refer is like a crowdfunded brush line that started up, I think it last year maybe, is when I really heard people talking about them. And they've been targeting all of my influencer friends because Teresa and Michelle Wong and Angelica, I think all receive like PR from them. And Angelica has been like raving about the refer brushes. Even when I saw her in person in October in New York, she had refer brushes with her and she was just saying how great they are. So I really, really want to try them. I even bought it up in the Half Cousins podcast when I was on with Teresa pretty recently. And Teresa's like, you have the Wade Goss brushes and the Sonia G brushes. And I was like, yeah, I know, but I bought those on Beautylish with a payment plan. Like, that is a much easier pill to swallow than getting, like, spending $200 on makeup brushes. And I have so many brushes right now. So it's really hard for me to justify that purchase. But we'll see, maybe in the future, there will be something they come out with um, that gives me the chance to try them. So they are on my list. And so number 18 is the Makeup Geek rebranding. That one, I already picked up two, well, okay, I picked up two palettes. Technically, one's a quad, so I'm just counting it as one purchase. Uh, but those should be here soon. So I'm very excited to see what changes Marlena has made. With Makeup Geek, she's calling it like the Matrix system. So you can like custom build a palette, which I think is pretty cool. I mean, there's a lot of brands that you can do that with. Well, actually the only one I can really think of is ColourPop. So I feel like ColourPop's definitely done it. But I think it'll be nice for Makeup Geek, makeup geek fans to have that option with her product. So very, very excited to swatch and play with my new shadows when they get here. The next brand I want to try, I don't know if this counts as a brand, but I feel like it kind of does. It's the Trend Mood box. So this last one that she just did was her second box and it had an exclusive launch of the Latte palette by Dominique Cosmetics. I've since anti-hauled it, so I'm not planning on buying it when it launches, but I thought that box was cool, that eyeshadow palette. It had some Sigma brushes in it. like. It was definitely good value for money, so I'm very excited to see if I can get my hands on one of her boxes and just see, you know, what I, what I might end up picking up because she does announce what is in the box, which I think is kind of fun because then you can decide if you want to part with your money, you know? So it's kind of an interesting concept. I kind of thought it was going to be like a subscription box where you didn't know what you were getting, but we'll see what direction it goes in. I know people were pretty pissed with the last one because not everyone that wanted a box was able to get one, uh, but I don't know. I am curious about the brand. And then number 20 is Bossy Cosmetics, and this one was actually suggested to me by one of you guys. Again, it's another black-owned brand, and I think they mostly just do lipsticks right now. I read a little bit about the owner of this brand as well. Very nice website very easy to shop and search and things like that. So I really, really enjoyed checking out the site. And it is Bossy Cosmetics. Did I say that? I can't remember if I said it. Um, looks really cool. I, again, like I said, I'm not planning on buying any lipsticks this year, but it's always good to have your eye on some products. And since you guys suggested the brand to me, I am pretty curious. So we'll see what they do in 2020. So those are my 20 brands to try in 2020. I don't think I'm gonna try 20 brands in 2020. 
Um, and if I do try 20 brands, I don't think they're all on this list. Like I said, I anticipate that something new might, might pop up on my radar. So we'll see how it goes. But thank you guys for watching this video. Like I said, if you have any other brands you think I should be checking out or should be on my radar this year, definitely leave that down in the comments. Let me know what brands you are planning on trying this year. I know some of you had already mentioned that you're trying like Kaleido, Sydney Grace, Cleonad, like a lot of the ones I had mentioned in my brands I think you should try in 2020. I of course try to pick brands that I've never tried because that's the whole point of this video. So yeah, I hope you liked it. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you in my next video soon. Bye guys!